If you're visiting Tucson, Arizona for the first time and trying to get an idea about where you would like to purchase a home, whether it be a winter home, a rental property, or your full-time residence, you're going to want to check out the full city to decide what part of town you like best. Tucson is so spread out and you really need to explore the entire city before you can truly decide where you want to purchase property. Hey everyone, it's Kimberly, your go-to real estate agent in Tucson, and today I'm taking you on a city tour of my hometown. If you like what you learn, let me know by hitting the like button and punching the red subscribe button so we can hang out together on future Tucson videos. And don't forget to comment below with your favorite community in Tucson. Contact me when you're ready to buy a house, town home, condo, manufactured home, or land in the city or outskirts of Tucson. All my contact information is in the description below. Check out other videos on this channel to get a more in-depth view of individual suburbs and zip codes in Tucson, but for now, let me take you on a tour through the different parts of the city I've lived in for almost 40 years. We'll start on the north side of Tucson, in the Catalina foothills, one of the most expensive and most popular parts of the city. Throughout all of Tucson, there are a ton of golf opportunities and hiking, walking, jogging, and biking trails, most of which I won't be focusing on in this video, but I will say that Catalina foothills is no exception. This gorgeous area of town is full of things to see and do, as well as beautiful resorts and spas to stay at and relax in. But I encourage visitors and potential potential buyers to check out a few hot spots here. Visit Lon Condotta Mall on Skyline and Campbell, a great outdoor mall with fantastic restaurants, shops, and views. While in the foothills, take a drive up and down Skyline Drive, Sunrise Drive, and River Road. The drives are nice and the views are fantastic. The nice thing about Catalina Foothills, besides the beauty, historic homes, long list of things to do, and the high-ranking school district, is the easy location to pretty much everything. It's not a far drive to almost anywhere in the city. The downside to the Catalina Foothills community is the high price you have to pay for real estate to get that great lifestyle. Head east and make your way to the next part of our tour, Sabino Canyon. Sabino Canyon is a favorite hot spot for Tucson residents and tourists alike. If the weather is nice, hike some trails along the saguaro-filled canyon. If you don't like walking, take the tram to get the tour. Either way, bring water, sunglasses, hats, and sunscreen. Closed-toed shoes are important too. Travel out to the northeast side of town to an area called Tanca Verde. Tanca Verde is generally less expensive than the Catalina foothills, but still a tad pricey. There isn't as much to do in this area as far as shopping, restaurants, and nightlife, but people move to Tanca Verde for the freedom, privacy, and to get away from it all. Many people here have horses. Visit Agua Caliente Park to sit in the shade near water and have a picnic or go on a little walk and take at least a partway drive up Mount Lemon, one of my favorite places in the city. The drive up Mount Lemon from the base to the top is about 45 minutes, but the top of the mountain is about 15 to 30 degrees cooler than the city of Tucson at any given time because of the vast elevation increase. Take some trails around the mountain, visit the shops, restaurants, or ski lift, or just enjoy the views from any of the many lookout points. Head back down into Tucson and travel south down Houghton Road until you are on the southeast side of the city. You will eventually come to the suburb of Vail, popular amongst families for its great school district, popular with active servicemen and women for being relatively close to Davis Monthan Air Force Base, and popular amongst anyone looking to purchase land to build custom homes. There is a lot of land for sale all over Tucson, but a lot of buyers moving here from other places ask me specifically about land on Tucson's east side because the land is beautiful and tends to be a better bang for your buck, so to speak, compared to other areas of town. There are a lot of cool things to do in Vail, but you may want to check out Colossal Cave, which is a fascinating cave you can tour full of history. Although Colossal Cave also has views, picnic areas, gardens, horseback trail rides, museums, you can also check out the Charon Vineyards Winery in Vail, just south of the interstate. Head down Sawadita Road all the way to the small town of Sawadita. Along the way, you will pass the Pecan Orchards and Green Valley Pecan Company. While you're in Sawadita, take a walk around Sawadita Lake, perfect for fishing, jogging around, or just turtle watching. Families love Sawadita for its kid and family friendly community feel, and it's easy to see why. This is a newer town, and most of the homes were built just in the last 20 years, 
and it's been voted one of the safest cities in the state of Arizona. South of Saladita is the retirement community of Green Valley. Drive north on Interstate 19 back towards Tucson, but first stop off at the San Javier del Bac Mission, full of history and beauty, known for being the oldest European structure in all of Arizona. As you head into the city, explore downtown Tucson and all of its museums, local restaurants and pubs, and city buildings. If you can't decide on just one or two fun things to do, take the Turquoise Trail, a two and a half mile self-guided walking tour that takes you over 20 landmarks in the downtown area. Download the app to follow along with the history and significance of each building and structure. Head out west to the Arizona Desert Museum, another hotspot in Tucson, popular with residents and tourists, and voted one of the best museums in the nation. It's more like a zoo with desert animals and plants you don't see every day. Even the drive to the museum is beautiful. Bring your water, sunglasses, hat, and sunscreen to this spot too. There's a lot of outdoor walking and not a ton of shade everywhere, so plan your day accordingly. Travel back up north and visit Marana, Arizona. Marana is another nice, newer town just northwest of Tucson, also traditionally low in crime, also fast growing like Sawarita, but Marana is unique in that it is right off the Interstate 10 freeway. So if you have friends or family or work opportunities in the city of Phoenix, which many Tucsonans do, it's just a quick drive up the Interstate 10 freeway to get to our state's capital. There are a lot of great things to do in Marana, but if you're looking for a nice park with nice paths and something for the kids, visit Gladden Farms Park and Splash Pad. If you're up for an adventure, visit Way Out West Ranch and get a tour of the Sonoran Desert on horseback. Keep heading east and enter the suburban town of Oro Valley, a relatively expensive area of Tucson, but absolutely beautiful, with an endless list of outdoor things to do and delicious restaurants to eat at, and also a very traditionally low crime community. Drive up and down La Cañada to get a feel for the community. Oro Valley is popular amongst active retirees, as about one-fourth of the residents are over age 65. But of course, there are plenty of families here too. If you're there during a farmer's market, make sure to stop by. Otherwise, explore Honey Bee Canyon Park or go play golf. Still, my favorite thing about Oro Valley continues to be the beautiful mountain views. If you head north, you will eventually hit the rural and unincorporated community of Catalina, Arizona, and even further north, you will find the beautiful Saddlebrook, one of the largest active private adult resort communities in Southern Arizona. Luxury retirement at its finest. We're almost done with our city tour, but first I have to zoom in on Tucson's Midtown, and I can't make a video about the city of Tucson without talking about the University of Arizona. Tucson is a college town for sure, with the U of A being a top employer in the city and a big factor attracting young people from all over the world. Midtown Tucson is also full of museums, local restaurants, parks, theaters, bars, coffee shops, hotels, and shopping. And many of the homes in Midtown are in historic neighborhoods with their own personality and charm. Whether you're hanging out at Reed Park or Reed Park Zoo, or exploring our beautiful Tucson Botanical Gardens, Tucson's Midtown has something for all ages. Well, there you have it, a city tour of Tucson, Arizona. The city is spread out, and each area has something special to offer its residents and visitors. There's something for everyone here. But the question is, what are you looking for in the city? And which community would work best for you and your interests and needs? Throw the name of your favorite part of town in the comments below, or ask me a follow-up question about your favorite spot. I'll be sure to respond. As a fourth generation Tucsonan, I'd love to help you with your Tucson home search. So contact me when you're ready to get started. All my information is in the description below each of my videos, and I have many other videos on this channel that explore each of the areas of the city of Tucson in more depth. So please watch those to get more insight. Give me a big thumbs up on your way out the door if you learned something new today, and subscribe to this channel for more content about Tucson and the surrounding areas. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you in the next video.